Good afternoon, my dear friends and colleagues. I am so glad you could make it for today's conference. I truly celebrate every opportunity I get to be in community with you, whether in person or online. It's been a wild ride joining Theater Bay Area in this new role, and we are just getting started. When I took this position, I knew that the challenges facing us would be many. TBA, as with each of you and with each of your companies, continues to be in a renewal and recovery period, and I know we have a lot of work to do. But as I reflect on the last 10 months, I can't say enough how grateful I am for the journeys each of you have taken me on. This year, you've brought us world premiere plays and musicals, new interpretations of classic favorites and Pulitzer Prize winners, striking works of contemporary opera, thrilling moments of improvisational theater, and dance and circus arts, captivating one-person shows, Shakespeare in the Park, festivals of short plays and new works, true celebrations of our region's unique diversity, including queer and trans stories, and the world's most inclusive and unapologetically vibrant drag performances. You've taken us on journeys to early 19th century Russia, to late 19th century Vietnam, to 20th century Iran, from a shoe factory in Northampton, to a jazz nightclub in Detroit, to a Haudenosaunee reservation in New York, and an epic road trip from Philadelphia to California. You've brought stories about California and about the Bay Area to the stage, taking us from the Central Valley to San Francisco's Chinatown to the Marin Headlands. You've told us the stories of Mary Woolley and Jeanette Marks, Mahalia Jackson, Fanny Lou Hamer, Sandra Day O'Connor and Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Sonia Sotomayor, Betty Reed Soskin and Larry Itleon. You've made us laugh, weep, contemplate, reflect, and process. You've transported us, entertained us, enlightened us, and grounded us. You've used your talent, your passion, and skill to support playwrights, to mentor the next generation of leaders, of designers, and technicians, and to transform the lives of young people, students of all ages, individuals experiencing incarceration, and those who have been impacted by incarceration and the justice system. You've reimagined what accessibility in theater means, pivoted to new platforms, and stayed nimble and saw opportunities where others might only have seen roadblocks. You are my inspiration. You are why I get up every day to support the incredible work and the vision of each of you. People ask me what motivates me to continue working in Bay Area theater. And that answer is you. We are a community that creates art that could be created nowhere else and by no one else. Art that is quintessentially Bay Area, art that is inclusive to all theater makers and theater goers, and that fearlessly celebrates and reflects the incredible diversity of our unique region. Without a doubt, we are back. Theater is back. Of course, we haven't been without challenges, and the road to recovery has been, and in many ways, continues to be steep. We mourn the losses of our community, including the closures of long-standing companies and venues, and we mourn the re very real loss of members of our community, uh, most recently drag icon and Bay Area mainstay, Heclina, who passed last week in London. And as we all know, the costs of creating theater have only grown in the last three years since the pandemic changed everything. To recap the challenges facing you would be to tell you nothing new. You don't need me to remind you about the challenges of pandemic shutdowns, of COVID precautions and COVID testing costs, of the need for more understudies, renewed focus on equity, diversity, inclusion, accessibility, and social justice, the impact of AB5 and other legislation, overarching economic unpredictability, and recent bank closures and troubles in our regional banking system. How are we to deal with all of this? How are we to deal with well, to quote, quote my favorite film of the year, everything, everywhere, all at once. The answer, one step at a time and hand in hand with each other. Unprecedented challenges will take new, bold, and unprecedented solutions. We have to think differently. How do we envision new solutions to these new problems? 
How must TBA rethink what it means to be a service organization? And how can all of us as theater leaders and theater makers rethink how we operate, how we work with and support each other and how we re-envision service to the greater community? Let's start with TBA. I mean, what is TBA doing differently now and what's on the horizon? As you all know, we've just launched our new member portal and website. While a vast improvement from where we were before, we know there is still work to be done to improve functionality. But when I came on board, I had to make this a priority. We heard that loud and clear. And from a member services standpoint, it was crucial that we started fresh with a solid technological foundation with which we could better serve you. All of this was intended to provide a better platform for the Bay Area Talent Bank, the theater directory for the posting of jobs, auditions, playwright opportunities, industry services, space rentals, events, exclusive ticket offers, offers and a reliable, comprehensive What's Playing Now page so we can effectively spread the word about your work to tourism partners, the hotel industry, and more. Many of you are using this new platform very well. But we still have work to do to make sure that the What's Playing Now page, the Talent Bank, and the Theater Directory are as complete as possible. This will take some time as folks repopulate their data in the new system. So if you haven't done so already, please make sure you coordinate with us to get your full seasons up and all your information um, on our calendar and all your director, di directory profiles updated. But we know that the work can't just stop with a fresh website and member portal. Right? TBA continues to expand our popular cash grants program, providing financial support to individual theater artists and small theater companies and collaboratives here in the Bay Area. This past fall, we offered our first ever cash sustains grants, providing general operating support for the first time to our first three grantees of that program, Play Cafe, Stageworks Theater, and formerly incarcerated People's Performance Project. We've relaunched a weekly writer's room for playwrights in collaboration with ZSpace, and we also continue to facilitate regular convenings for artistic directors, managing directors, the theater services committee, and coming soon, regular meetings for marketing directors as well. Our professional development wing has provided webinars this year on accounting for artists and theater companies, on uh, fiscal reporting, fiscal sponsorship, an audition masterclass for actors, marketing for individual artists, how to get more and better press coverage with Lily Janik of the San Francisco Chronicle, and a behind the scenes Ask Me Anything session with literary manager Katie Craddock and director of dramaturgy Joy Meads of American Conservatory Theater. In the coming year, we'll be working in collaboration with other experts in theater education to expand our offerings and professional development for both members and non-members alike. And also in the works, I think many of you will be happy to hear, we are bringing back live and general auditions in 2024. In response to other new community needs, we are also just reimagining what other services are necessary in this new era. We know that the costs of staffing and of producing have skyrocketed for you. And we've had many, many conversations in our managing directors and artistic directors meetings about what shared staffing programs might look like. We are in the research and development phase and hope to pilot a shared services model in the next year to provide shared staffing resources, potentially for human resources, onboarding, third-party mediation, EDI consulting, possibly more. And we know there's more we can do to help with cooperative advertising to get those audiences back in your theaters. The postcard distribution network, we're excited to say, has been relaunched in select areas. We are expanding that program back to its full capacity as soon as display locations make themselves available. So if you'd like to participate in this program, and especially if you have a display location to offer, spread the word, and please contact our marketing and communications officer, Art Quinones, as soon as you can. We will continue expanding our cooperative advertising offer offerings in the coming year, including and events coming up very quickly. We're excited to announce Bay Area Theater Week 2023 is back. In just a few short weeks, from May 15th to June 11th, 2023, we are partnering with the Today, Today Ticks group, which now includes Gold Star, for the relaunch of Bay Area Theater Week. This event will spotlight participating venues and performances across the region with a concentrated, multifaceted marketing push to millions of theater lovers over a four-week campaign. 
To participate, you'll need to supply tickets at one or more promotional price points, either $20 and under, $30, $40, or $50 tickets, whatever makes sense for your venue. More details on how to participate will be coming very shortly, so stay tuned. And one program that you may have noticed missing is the TBA Awards, first launched in 2014. I know that for many members, and especially those who participated in the adjudication process, this was a beloved program. However, survey surveys and an organizational assessment of ALJP Consulting have informed us that the awards were unfortunately the very least valued program um, as according to both individual and company members. Uh, in contrast, offerings like the job board, grants, uh, marketing and promotional assistance, legislative advocacy, the general auditions, and conferences and convenings were among the top value TBA offerings. I've also had to think about the cost of producing and maintaining the awards program and how those resources might be better spent in service of the community. And moreover, just questioning if a competitive awards program is in the best interest of the community or even the place of a service organization like ours to implement. Based on all these factors and discussions, it be became clear that we would not be able to support the TBA awards program in the foreseeable future. Uh, but the awards did provide a few key benefits that we hope to bring to you in other ways. As one member pointed out to me recently, one of the primary benefits of the TBA awards program um, wasn't the awards themselves, but the facilitation of unprecedented cross-pollination within our community, motivating scores of theater makers to simply see each other's work. We will have to be imaginative in finding new ways to foster the same type of cross theater support. So I encourage you to seek each other out. Invite your colleagues throughout the TAB, TBA community, offer comps or discounts to TBA members, and think of new ways that we can all support each other's work. On the marketing side, uh, the, T the TBA awards program would place a TBA recommends badge on pr productions that scored highly among adjudicators. And we know that this, those who received this badge experience boosts in ticket sales. There also existed a gender parity badge program that achieved similar aims. To replace these recognitions, uh, we are now developing a TBA highlights program, a new program that will award four distinct badges to celebrate the achievements of individual productions based on objective criteria, diversity and reflection of the community, local casting and staffing, environmental sustainability, and accessibility to audiences. We are approaching the final stages of development for this program. So this is just a little preview, but uh, look for this program's launch this summer uh, in time for your next season. Lastly, the awards also provided us an opportunity for an end of year celebration, for us to gather once more in person, uh, to see friends we may not have seen in a while, and to really just toast each other's work. I don't wanna lose that. So as many of you already know, We'll be having our first annual TBA Spring Soiree on Monday, May 15th at the gorgeous green room of the War Memorial Veterans Building in San Francisco. Uh, there'll be performances from shows from throughout this past year, uh, delicious food and an open bar. So bring your dancing shoes, uh, dress to impress or dress to express and celebrate the year with us and help us raise funds so we can continue expanding and improving our services to the community. Tickets are on sale now on theaterbayarea.org under our events menu. Um, and on the legislative advocacy front, we are working with a statewide coalition pushing now for the funding of SB 1116, which would establish um, the Equitable Payroll Fund, a grant program to provide reimbursements of payroll expenses for small nonprofit arts organizations, uh, which would benefit a huge portion of our member companies and by extension, our entire arts ecosystem here in the Bay Area. So right now, I'd like everyone to take a moment now to take out your devices. I really won't be offended. I'm going to put up a link on our on the screen right now. Let's see if I can do this. There's that link. Um, if you can go now to bit.ly dot slash SB 1116 TBA and fill out a one click action letter to your representatives to fund this bill. It's a $50 million budget request to launch the Equitable Payroll Fund for small nonprofit arts organizations. So once again, that's bit.ly slash SB 1116 TBA. Please do this now and forward this link widely to your friends and networks. This is an urgent numbers game and every, every letter counts. This is one action 
that all of us can take together to improve the state of our sector and keep our small nonprofit arts organizations alive. Okay. I'm gonna stop that share and keep going. Um, what else can we do? Well, now more than ever, I'm asking us to reflect on how we can reimagine and re envision what service means in our industry. How can we reimagine new ways of serving and integrating with our communities beyond the traditional production of shows and educational programs? How do we think beyond these boundaries and explore new ways to serve our community? How can we do this in a time where it can feel harder and harder to think in terms of abundance when resources seem so scarce? Well, an abundance mindset, as many of you know, is a mindset of plenty, where one believes that there are enough resources, opportunities, and successes to go around for everyone. This mindset encourages collaboration, support, and generosity, as opposed to a scarcity mindset, which believes that resources are limited and competition is necessary to survive. In the context of the theater ecosystem, an abundance mindset can help us create a more collaborative and supportive community. As Wayne Dyer once said, abundance is not something we acquire, it is something we tune into. By embracing an abundance mindset here in our Bay Area theater community, we can tap into the wealth of resources and opportunities that already and still exist within our community and use them to support each other and create even more opportunities for success. To put it another way, Brene Brown reminds us that the opposite of scarcity is not abundance. The opposite of scarcity is simply enough. This is our reminder that abundance is not about having an unlimited amount of resources, but rather recognizing that we already have enough to share and to help each other thrive. So what do each of us have as individuals and as companies that we can share with others? How do we foster a culture of generosity within the TBA community, regardless of the sizes of our budgets and wallets? What knowledge, expertise, spaces, and resources do we already have that can help lift up our neighbor? As theater makers, we know the importance of collaboration in creating our work. We know that. We know how crucial it is to work together to build something that none of us could have built alone, to create something greater than the sum of its parts. That's in our DNA as theater makers. But we just have to remember that this does not just apply to individual productions in our siloed rehearsal rooms and production meetings. This applies to our greater arts ecosystem as well. Indeed, some of the best work we've seen have been co-productions, um, bringing the ideas, talents, and resources from multiple companies together to create incredible new work. And this principle extends beyond co-pros. We can apply this way of thinking to promote the general health of the Bay Area theater ecosystem by working together to address issues that affect us as a whole. By collaborating and sharing resources, we can support each other's efforts to create a more sustainable and equitable theater ecosystem at every level and at every budget size. We can share best practices for sustainability, work together to advocate for more funding and resources for the arts and support initiatives to increase access to the arts for marginalized communities. We must continue to view each other as collaborators, not competitors and work together to maximize the resources we have available, share production resources, exchange knowledge and expertise and personnel, and cross promote each other's work. Our communities need us. They need us to collaborate more than ever before. By working together, we can create a stronger and more vibrant theater ecosystem that serves the needs of our communities and inspires us to continue creating impactful and meaningful art. As we do this though, there are still very real questions around safety that theater companies continue to grapple with. So I do wanna take a little moment to talk a bit about COVID. Uh, as we emerge from the pandemic to yet another version of the new normal, some theaters may feel it is necessary to maintain masking protocols and other precautions. Other companies, along with those in other industries and regions of the US are finding it's time to relax COVID precautions such as masking. For many, this may be the right exact the exact right thing to do, depending on your, your venue uh, or your county. Wherever you fall, though, I hope that we all still remember that there are those in our community who are still at risk, who are immunocompromised, or have loved ones at home who fall into those categories. 
Not everyone is able to attend large convenings and crowded indoor events. And the pandemic has shown a light on a, a part of our community that has always been there. I urge us all to be thinking about accessibility and what each of our companies can do to make our programs as inclusive as possible for all people, including those who may be vulnerable to COVID. How do we build a theater ecosystem that is truly inclusive of all people, including those who are at risk of respiratory diseases? There are no easy answers here. As recent audience data suggests that our ticket buying community is at present highly polarized with roughly equal, equal numbers in favor of and opposed to relaxing COVID precautions. Several member companies have found success this year um, with the following model, by relaxing masking requirements overall, but still designating certain productions with required masks uh, or other enhanced safety measures. If this is a model that you think will work for you, please consider it. What began as a public health issue a few years ago is now an issue of inclusion and accessibility, and that is here to stay. And it is up to each of us to build the inclusive and welcoming theater that we envision. We must also not lose sight of our values of equity, diversity, and inclusion when it comes to racial and social justice and inclusive, inclusivity of all genders. We have made strides, but there is still work to be done here. At TBA, we commit to having our values in EDI underpin everything we do in every decision we make and in every program we implement. And we recognize that there's always learning to be done and improvements to be made. EDI must not be a discrete program that's siloed from other workings, but it must be integrated in every decision. How are our marketing materials and venues accessible and inclusive? How do we think about EDI in casting and staffing and programming decisions? And what are the, the ways that we demonstrate to the community in meaningful ways that we're not just talk when it comes to these issues? As we continue to prioritize EDI in our work, we must also continue to recognize the power of representation in our productions. Representation matters. And it is crucial that we continue to amplify underrepresented voices in our community. We must prioritize the work of artists from historically marginalized communities, not only as a matter of social justice, but as a necessary component of creating work that is relevant and resonant for audiences today, work that is truly reflective of our beautifully diverse region. Moreover, we, we must also prioritize the creation of safe and inclusive spaces within our theater community. This means actively working to create an environment where everyone feels welcome and valued, regardless of their race, gender, sexuality, ability, or any other factor. It means making sure that all members of our community feel empowered to speak up when they see something that is not right, and that all members of the TBA community understand and abide by the spirit of our new community accountability agreement. And when mistakes are made or harms are incurred, we must find a way to build progress by calling in, not just calling out those who have caused concern. We need to create spaces where dialogue can be had and where a path forward for implementing improvements is in sight. We must all affirm our commitment to doing better and learning together and not lose sight that we are all in this as one community. And as we do this work within, we must also recognize the role that theater plays in our larger society. We have an impact, folks. As we continue to push for change within our community, we must also recognize that theater has the power to inspire change beyond our walls. We have a responsibility to use our art as a platform for social justice, to create work that challenges our audiences to think critically about the world around them and to take action towards positive change. Let us not forget that power, that theater has the power to spark conversations, to build bridges and to affect real change in our world. So what can we envision for ourselves and the world? Well, I envision a future where theater is accessible to all, a future where we break down barriers of geography, socioeconomic status, and physical ability. We need to continue working towards creating more affordable ticket options, increasing the number of ASL interpreted performances, and providing accessibility accommodations at every stage of the theatrical process. We can achieve greater accessibility through technology and innovative approaches to programming. I mean, imagine a virtual reality theater experience that brings audiences into the action or audio described performances that make theater accessible to those with visual impairments. 
By embracing new technologies and reimagining what theater can be, we can make our art form more inclusive and welcoming. I envision a theater community that is united in its efforts to create meaningful change in the world. A community that works together to address issues of social injustice and equity. I imagine a theater ecosystem where we leverage our resources and more deeply collaborate with outside companies and organizations. An interdisciplinary community that shares knowledge and ideas, fosters collaboration, and inspires one another to push the boundaries of what is possible. I envision a future where the theater industry is more sustainable and environmentally conscious. We must consider the environmental impact of our productions now and work to reduce waste, decrease energy consumption, and source materials responsibly. Additionally, we must prioritize the mental health and well being of our human resources, of our theater workers who often face burnout and stress by implementing sustainable practices and fostering a culture of self care we can ensure that the theater industry remains healthy and vibrant for generations to come. And I envision a future where theater education is more widely available and accessible. We must work to increase access to theater programs in schools, especially in underserved communities. Additionally, we need to provide more professional development opportunities for educators and teaching artists, technical directors, designers, and stage managers so they can continue to grow and evolve their craft. By investing in theater education and supporting the next generation of theater workers, we can ensure that the Bay Area theater industry remains the vital, crucial part of our cultural landscape that we all know it is. So now I ask you, what do you envision? As I come to a close today, there's still a whole afternoon of exciting programming to look forward to. So just a little preview. Next up, we'll have an opportunity to explore the con floor over in Studio B at Bay Area Children's Theater for those of you who are in person. Um, if you're online, you can still explore the space offerings of Landmark Musical Theater and Great Star Theater, the digital solutions from Dream Warrior Group, and information from the Today Ticks Group and Theater Bay Area on how to participate in Bay Area Theater Week 2023, which is coming up fast, as well as other marketing opportunities like the Theater Bay Area Postcard Distribution Network. This is also a great time um, to get your tickets for the TBA Spring Soiree coming up on Monday, May 15th. Uh, so if you're online, head over to our TBA website and go to the events section, get your tickets for that event if you're interested. And also don't forget to take action on SB 1116 with a one click letter to your representative to support our budget ask to establish the equitable payroll fund for small nonprofit arts organizations. Uh, at 4 p.m., we'll begin our third set of breakout sessions here on Zoom. Um, we'll have Combating Massage Noir in Bay Area Theater and Beyond, moderated by Don Monique Williams with Tiara Allen, Elizabeth Carter, Margot Hall, and Salima Jones. And in our other session, Resources for Accessible Performances on Stage, Backstage, and in the House, moderated by Michaela Goldhaber of Rye Crips with Tiffany Taylor from Gravity Access Services and Lauren Kivovitz of Inclusive Arts. Following these breakout sessions, we are thrilled to present our final plenary speaker, Christopher Morrison, for a presentation filled with possibility, Envision the Future, What You Need to Know About VR and Tech. I want to take this time now to thank you again. I thank you to each and every one of you for the work that you do to make our theater community the vibrant and inclusive ecosystem that it is. In this new era, let's continue to work together to create the future that we envision. Thank you again for being here. Bye-bye.